Oh, hey, good to see you here. What's going on everyone? This is G from Red Imagination Photography. Today, we're going to talk about one of the questions that some of my friends often ask me about when they starting off photography. What, intro? Is there an intro? What camera should I get as my first DSLR? A little bit more information before you go into that. Um, first of all, what's the expectation of people getting a DSLR? What was my expectation when I first started to pick up the camera and learn photography? Well, obviously, I want to take a beautiful, nice shots. I want to take photos like a nice portrait with the blur background and a foreground, which we call it bokeh. Which also means that you do need to invest time to learn at least the basic of photography so that you can achieve what you want to achieve after you have your DSLR. Because we want to take nice photos intentionally rather than coincidentally. Now the questions that you need to ask yourself when you want to purchase a DSLR. So what would you like to photograph? A lot of people getting the first DSLR when they are actually going on a trip. That could be the main reason, which means that landscapes, holiday and a bit of everything to start off with. And the next question you need to ask yourself is, what's the budget? Basically, these two questions are what I normally asked. What would you like to photograph and what's your budget? As a beginner, you are very likely to start off as an all-rounder, like a bit of everything. You know, you, you see this and you have something in your mind about how to photograph that, or you probably don't have any idea how to photograph that and just like want to photograph that and see how that turns out. Which is okay, you know, that's how we all learn. Just like how I started as well. Once you learn more and build your skills, you then know what you need. Therefore, the extra dollars that you're going to spend on the camera are justified. Again, about the budgeting. One thing that you shouldn't forget is when you purchase a camera, just like when you purchase a vehicle, there would be some extras that you will need to factor in to make that learning experience more enjoyable. You are very likely going to need a tripod, a flash unit that's optional, but it can be helpful extra batteries. I reckon that's pretty important, especially when you go on a trip. You know, you don't want to lugging around with one camera and your battery dies halfway. You stop shooting, you can't shoot no more. Not a good experience, right? So extra batteries are essential, I reckon. When it comes to brand, I personally would recommend brands with the vast majority of options when it comes to lenses or even the range of the cameras from the beginner to the pros and with different price points as well. So for that very reason, I would recommend either Nikon or Canon. Well, it's not sponsored by the way, so I'm just saying it based on my own experience. At the moment, as we speak, it's April 2018. For Nikon, they've got the 3000 series. So for example, D3400. For Canon, I believe that they've got EOS 1500 um, so you might want to look into those I'm not saying that all the other brands are not good enough no like, in fact that there's so many brands out there that are really really good number one get the cheapest DSLR that you can find in the market trust me every single DSLR these days they are fully capable in producing beautiful photos one lens, which is like all round lens for beginner, normally it's 18 to 55 millimeter lens. And I would highly recommend you to get the second lens. Depending on whether you get a crop sensor or the full frame body, you might want to go to 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter lens. Well, this is my old D300, pair up with the 50 millimeter lens, 1.8. What that 1.8 means, it just means that the iris on the lens can actually open bigger. That then gives you a nice bokeh, which is a blur foreground and a background uh, while the subject is in focus. When I first look at the bokeh, I was like, oh my god, this is, this is what I want to achieve. I reckon a price point with one camera body and two lenses like that is about 900 Australian dollars as of now. So look it up. If you want to get cheaper options, obviously you can browse for the older model and see if any shops still have that. 
obviously the older model might have like slightly difference in terms of features but again you know those features that they have in the current new models you might not need the features anyway right so there's no point paying extra bucks if you want to photograph like wildlife birds I would recommend faster lenses maybe if you want to get a zoom lenses like this one is 72-200 lens 2.8 but lens like this can easily go up to $3,000 if you have a lot of money then go for it and no one's stopping you from getting nice equipment but what I'm trying to say is when you first picking up the camera you probably wouldn't know what it means anyway apart from the zoom and it looks really cool so start your way up from the bottom I would say you know that way you got more understanding about the cameras and the equipment and the last point is take time to learn be creative you know, I've seen people do crazy stuff so like creatively crazy stuff using their iPhones why can't you do it with your DSLR it's got a lot more potentials it all depends on you as the man behind the camera rather than the gear itself all right guys hope you like this video please hit the like button that will mean a lot to me i'm just starting off my vlog and tutorial i will bring on more content to you guys really excited about this all it's a new journey to me and don't forget to subscribe follow me on instagram just look up for red imagination photography instagram facebook youtube thanks for watching but just just remember this remember this love what you do and do what you love. Have passion. Cheers, guys.